Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. This is a beginner's guide to cloth in Blender 4.0. I've done a video like this in an older version of Blender, but I thought it's time for an update. So I'm going to show you step by step how to set up cloth as a beginner and how to add in control points and how to hook objects, how to pin different things, all of the different considerations from a basic beginner's perspective to kind of get you started. So this video is going to be well explained. It's going to be step by step. And all you need is a fresh copy of Blender 4.0 or newer. And we're going to jump right into it and have some fun. Okay, so with a new scene open up in Blender, let's select all the default objects and let's press delete on our keyboard. We're then going to go Shift A. We're going to go to our mesh options. Let's add in a plane. This is going to be like a floor where our cloth can interact. But what we're going to do is we're going to go S and then we're going to type in four. So S four, and then we're going to press enter to make it four times bigger. Now there's something you want to keep in mind. If you press N on your keyboard, so you're going to press N and then you're going to go to your items with this object selected. You're going to be able to see here that the scale is now four times bigger on the X, Y, and Z. Now that's okay. Cause that's what we wanted to do, but we need to go now control a or command a, and we need to make sure to apply the scale. Because we're working with cloth physics, it needs to understand the scale here to be able to determine distances between collision objects. So always keep that in mind when you scale anything in object mode. If you were to scale inside of edit mode, then those transform vectors won't be affected. So if I grab this now in edit mode and I scale it down, by the way, don't do this yourself. I'm just showing you. And I go back to my item. It doesn't change anything. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Now I'm going to undo that because I actually do want it to be um, that size, but these are sort of important things you're going to have to keep in mind. We're then going to go shift a, and then under our mesh options, we're going to add in a UV sphere and let's grab this guy and let's tab into edit mode. So we don't have to worry about the transforms. Let's just go S and scale that up a bit. G Z and let's move it up a little bit and then tab back out. And now let's right click and go shade smooth. We're going to go to our modifiers and let's go add modifier. And we can come over here in Blender 4.0 and just search and let's just type in sub div and let's get a subdivision surface modifier. And now it's nice and smooth. Now we're going to go shift a and we're now going to add in our cloth. We're going to add in a plane. We're going to go G Z and go up. Then we're going to tab into edit mode and we're going to go S and scale it up a little bit. And at the moment, you can see this has four vertices that make it up. Now, this is a kind of a problem because if we run this as a cloth simulation, it's not going to have anywhere to fold. It needs more topology. It's just one single face. So with everything active inside of edit mode, you can right click and you can go subdivide. So right click subdivide. Then you're going to see a little subdivision tab here. And over here, you can drag this number up. It's going to stop at 10, but if you double click on it, you can come in here and type in any value you want. So you can type in 20, for example. Um, I'm going to go with 45. Okay. Now, if you have a slower computer, you may want to take that number down a considerable amount, but I wouldn't recommend going any lower than 25 because then it'll uh, be pretty low quality. So I'm going to go 45 or higher for demonstration purposes. Let's close this and let's tab back out into our object mode. So now we have a nice little setup. So before we actually give this a cloth physics properties, this cloth over here, we're going to tell it to interact with these surfaces. So let's select the floor over here and we're going to go over here to the physics properties. And you simply just need to click on this thing here that is collision. This is really, really easy because it's so self-explanatory. Likewise, you want to select this sphere and you want to go there as well and make sure to give it a collision, which means that this will now collide with these surfaces. You're then going to click on this plane and instead of giving it a collision, you're going to go just one down and under physics, you're just going to give it a cloth. Now let's go control S or command S. Let's make sure to save this. I'm just going to call it cloth tutorial. And now from frame one, it's always important. If you were anywhere in the middle here, you need to make sure you always come to frame one and then you're going to hit the space bar. And now you're going to see a nice cloth simulation running like this. I'm going to hit spacebar to stop. And I'm also going to right click and go shade smooth just so I get some smooth shading. But you're going to notice there's some weird artifacting here because these faces are actually penetrating for each other. And that is because by default with our cloth, if you go to the cloth settings, 
you can go all the way down, scrolling down to the collisions tab. To save um, computation, it turns off self-collision by default. So you're gonna have to go ahead and enable self-collision. That means the cloth won't only interact with the collision surfaces, but it'll consider itself as a collision surface and therefore interact with itself without intersection. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, it's gonna be a little bit slower, but now it's not cutting through itself. There's actual self collision with the cloth. Okay, so that's really cool. But before we get any further into some of these other things here, like the cache and how to bake all this in, let's look at a few more things that are very interesting that you should know as a beginner. So if we go back to frame one, let's say for example, we wanna take a certain part of this cloth and we wanna stop it from falling. To do that, you're gonna to have to go over to your data properties and you're gonna see something called vertex groups. Over here, you can click and create a group. You can create as many as you want, but I'm just gonna go with one group. I'm gonna double click on this. I'm just gonna call it pin just to be organized. We're calling it pin because we're gonna take some of these points and pin them, which means they're gonna stay in place. So now let's go into our edit mode. And now you can grab any vertex that you want. So I'm gonna just click on a vertex and while I'm holding in shift, I'm gonna click on another one and click on another one. You guys can choose whichever ones you want. It just means that they're gonna stay in place. Once you have them selected, you can go ahead and assign them to this pin group, okay? If you wanna test that, just deselect over here and then go with this group selected, click on select, and you should see that those come up as active. Let's go back into object mode. And now going back to our physics, with our cloth selected, we can scroll all the way down to the um, shape over here. So this is a tab called shape. Under there, you're gonna see pin groups. And now you can click on here and you should see the group you created. In this case, it's called pin. I'm gonna click on it. And now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see that these ones stay in place. The cool thing is now that you have that set up, at any point, you can go back here to your data, tab back in and you can select these points and you can remove one if you wanted to and you can select another point and assign it. Tab back out, go to frame one, hit the space bar, and it gives you a lot of customizability. Okay, now that's really cool. And if you're an absolute beginner at cloth, this is already kind of getting you in the right direction. But what if you wanted to go a step further and control some of these points? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's go into edit mode. And for now, let's just press A to select everything and let's go remove to remove it all. And for simplicity's sake, let's just grab this point over here. And let's go ahead and assign that to the pin group, just one point. And while we have it active, we're gonna press F3 on our keyboard. And we're gonna come in here and we're gonna type something. It's gonna be hook, so type in hook. And then you're gonna see an option for hook to new object. And now it's automatically added in this dummy object and empty. Let's go back to object mode, go to frame one. If we now grab this empty and we go G to move it, you can see that goes along. So all we have to do now is grab our cloth, go over to our modifiers, and then take the cloth and put it underneath the hook empty. If that is important, otherwise this won't work. Now at frame one, if we hit the space bar, we can grab this empty and go G while the simulation is running. And in real time here, you can see I am pulling the cloth around and that's really cool. Okay, but let's go a step further. Let's go back to frame one. Let's select this cloth, tab into edit mode, and let's select a empty over here. Maybe one, a few in, maybe here. Let's go to our um, vertex groups. Let's assign that as well. F3, type and hook, and then go to hook to new object, tab back out, and once again, go to your modifiers and make sure that the cloth is at the very bottom. Now we have two of these. So now let's go to frame one. Let's grab this empty over here and let's go ahead on frame one and go and press I on our keyboard and let's give it a location and rotation keyframe. Let's select this one as well and go I and insert a location and rotation. And then let's drag up to, let's say frame 70. Then we're gonna enable this thing called auto keying, which means it's gonna automatically add in keyframes. And on frame 70, we're gonna grab this guy and go G and move it in here. We're gonna grab this guy and go G and move it up to here. And then we're gonna grab the first keyframe, 
with it still active and go shift D to duplicate and drag it to 130. And then let's grab this one over here. Let's grab it as well. Shift D and let's drag it to 130. And let's come to our end frame and make it 130 frames. And now let's turn off the auto keying. So now these guys are gonna move from this position over to here and then back to where they came from like that. Now we have animation involved as well. Now let's also grab our cloth and furthermore, under our modifiers, let's go ahead and give it a modifier. We're gonna go search for a sub and get a subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out. And to give it a bit of thickness, let's go add modifier and search and get a solidify. So type in solid, get a solidify. And you can mess around with the thickness. I'm just gonna go with something like this. So a nice thick blanket. And now one more thing. If you want wind to affect this, you can go shift A. You can go to force fields and add in a wind. And then in your front view, you can go G and move it over, R to rotate it. Then you're gonna go over to your data for that. And let's increase the size of it. Then let's go over to our physics and let's give it a strength of 1,200. And now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see that the wind is now blowing on our cloth as well, adding a little bit more dynamic to the scene. So let's say for example, you wanted to cache this in. So make sure to save, grab your cloth, and then you're gonna go over to your cloth settings. Then you go down to your cache. And in this case, we have 130 frames. Let's change the end frame to 130 because that's how long we want the cache to be. And let's go ahead and bake. And now it's gonna bake this into our blend file. And there we have it guys. Now, if you wanna make any changes, you need to make sure to delete the bake first and then make your changes and then rebake it. But that's really, really cool. And one more little tip. If you tab into edit mode, go to face select and you press A to select everything. Go to your materials, then you can go plus and go new. And then let's assign that material and let's just call it red. And then under our viewport display, let's just make it red. And then let's just go plus again and go new. Let's just call it white. And let's just leave it as white under the viewport display. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go F3 and type in checker and go checker deselect. And then we're gonna go click on the white and go assign and then tab back out. And now we have this cool pattern over here. Just a fun little tip. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. This is a beginner's guide to cloth in Blender in Blender 4.0. I hope I've presented it well. If you've liked it, make sure to subscribe, check out my Patreon and my Instagram and follow my courses on Skillshare. You can join for free for one month with my link in the description below.